Welcome to the math record. Today I'll be covering the ICM State 2013 Division A Geometry. As a warning, some of these questions are kind of um, time consuming because you need a tr bunch of trial and error. So I'll warn you when some of those happen. Okay, number one. So basically we have a diagram and they say that DE is parallel with BC. And they say AD is 18A, ABD is uh, 45A. This is 70x, and this is uh, kx. So to solve for k, which is what we're looking for, you could just use similar diagrams, similar triangles, so it's the smaller over the bigger. So 18 plus 18 plus 45 is equal to 70 over 70 plus k. So this is just 63. So divide by 9 is 2, divide by 9 is 7, so 2 sevenths. So cross multiply, so we have 2 times 70 plus 2k is equal to 7 times 70. And then 7 minus the 2 is a 5, because 70 is the same, times 70 is 2k. So k equals 70 divided by 2 is 35, 35 times 5 is 175. And that's your answer for number 1, just that simple. Okay, number 2. Uh, this is a pentagon, and basically uh, OP is perpendicular with DE, and they say if OD was drawn, find that angle measure. And here, so DOP, so this is theta and this is 90. So we have to look for this angle. So let's first look for this angle. So we know that a pentagon is 540. So 540 to get one of them, since there's five, we divide by five to get 108. So if this is 108, divide by two, because this is halfway, right? Because if you draw another one, this triangle is the same as this. So this angle has to be the same as this. So basically, that's divide by 2 to get a 54. So that means add these two is 90. So theta plus 54 is 90. That means theta is equal to 36. And that is your answer for number 2. OK, number 3. Given A is 1, 2, B is 3, 9, C is 15, 6, find the order pair that represents the point at which the median from B intersects A. So basically, a median, if we have a triangle, is a point that starts here and the line goes down and the care goes to this line and cuts it in half. So we're basically looking for the midpoint. So the midpoint of AC is A is 1, half, one 2 and C is 15, 6. The midpoint is 15 plus 1, 16 divided by 2 is 8. 6 plus 2 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. So it's 8 comma 4. And that's basically it. Okay. Number 4. Okay, so we have this diagram. It's a usual diagram. It's a uh, re usually a basic diagram, and it's really a cur common occurring. So A E is uh, B E is eight, A B is twelve, D C is twenty five, and B C is sixteen. So we have to find A E. So basically, since vertical angles, these are the same, and guessing that these are parallel, so it's this one and this one. So basically, it tells us that this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. Okay. So then we could just use some triangles. So x divided by 12. Opposite of the x is the 25. Opposite of the 12 is the 16. So x is equal to 12 times 25 over 16. Simplify to a 3. Simplify to a 4. 3 times 25 is 75. Divide by that 4. And that is your answer for number 4. Just really that simple. Because it's one of the most occurring, more reoccurring questions. Number 5. The two longer sides of a rectangle has a total length of 496. So that means one of the sides, since it's just we only want one, not two of them, we divide by two to get 48. So a rectangle, that's 48. And one of the diagonals is 52. If it's a rectangle, both the diagonals are the same. So just write a 52 somewhere for one of them. Find the length of uh, one of the shorter sides of a rectangle. So this x. So you could use the Pythagorean theorem, but usually I like to use Pythagorean triples. So divide by 4 to get 13, divide by 4 to get 12. So this is the 5, 12, 13 triangle. So this is the 5, but need to scale it up by 4. So 5 times 4 is 20. And that is your answer for number 5. OK, number 6. In the diagram, ABDE is a parallelogram with F on AE and C on this. So basically, it's just describing the parallelogram. And this. So usually in geometry, you don't really need to read all of them. You just need to look for some keywords and just plug in some values. Because you could just assume some things. Uh, GF is 12. And BG is 
and GC. We let when you find GCs, let's call that X. So basically, since this is parallelogram, these are two parallel lines. So that tells us that this shape is the same as this shape. So this angle is equal to this, this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. So we have 8 divided by X is the same thing as 12 divided by 2.88. So to get the answer, you could just flip the numerator and denominators to get 2.88 divided by 12, and then you could just multiply by the 8. And you can use your calculator to find the answer. So 2.88 times 8 divided by 12, you should get a number that's 1.92. And that is your answer for number 6. Okay. Next one, number 7. A trapezoid has sides with respective length 2, 41, 20, and 41. And find the altitude. So, and another useful trick, as I always say in geometry, is to draw a picture. So, First off, I noticed 241, so it's an isosceles trapezoid. So we had to write 41, 41. And this is the heights, so let's call those H. And the smaller I put on top, so that's 2. Since the bottom is uh, 20, since this part is also 2 here, from here to here, this is a rectangle. So 20 minus 2 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And they're both 9 because they're both uh, equal the same business isosceles. So you could use the Pythagorean theorem for 9, H, and 41, but you could just use the Pythagorean triple, which is 90, 40, 41. So it's the 40. And that's basically it. I recommend knowing your Pythagorean triples, like at least some of them. So then it, it will be faster to do instead of calculating. Okay, so as this is the warning that I gave you in the, be in the beginning, eight requires a bunch of trial and error. So you're going to have to do this in your calculator, but you're going to have, uh, first you're going to get the general way to solve it, and then you're going to plug in values. So to do this, you're going to use something called Heron's or Hero's formula, which gives you the area of a triangle using its side lengths. So it's going to be 19 plus 38 plus 46, which is 103, plus K, 3K divided by 2. And then from this number, have these three numbers subtracted from that and multiply them. So then we have minus the 19... Minus the 38, technically. So 108 minus 38. So we have a 65 plus 3K plus K over 2. And then minus the 76. We get a 27 plus K over 2 times um, yeah, minus the 92, which is 11 plus K over 2. And then from that number, we take the square root. And that should equal to your area. So basically, we want A to be an integer, and we want K to be an integer. So just put this in your calculator. So I recommend just using a graphing calculator for this. So just make a table or a spreadsheet, uh, depending on what calculator you have. And then just start spamming numbers from like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. until you get the answer. And the smallest value of K is actually going to be 49. And that's your answer for number 40 for number eight. So it takes a lot of trial and error. Number nine, in the diagram, a circle is described in a square with a parameter of 32. Okay, so basically we, they uh, skip, etc., etc. We need the length of the radius of the smaller circle is k, k minus w squared f, and then add k plus w plus f. Okay, so let's draw a picture. And we also have a circle. Uh, that's decent enough. Okay. So what we could do, put a center and center. So we know that the um, parameter is 32. So a side length of the square is going to be divided by 4 to get 8. To get the 8 radius, we got to divide by 2 to get 4. So that means our radius is 4. So I'll just put on top. So this is 4. And I'm going to switch to a different color. And then to solve this, we will basically just make a triangle. So we connect these two. And then from here, we go the way here. And then from here, we go straight down to make a right triangle. So this is 90 degrees. And now what is this length? Well, this is radius 4, and we call this radius r. So 4 plus r is 4 plus r. So what is this length? 
Well, if you think about it, this is radius 4, right? And this is length r, so it's 4 minus r. And what's the length of this? Well, it's the same thing. This is 4, but this section is r, so it's 4 minus r also. So now you can use the Pythagorean theorem. So it's 4 minus r squared plus 4 minus r squared, or you can just multiply by 2. And it's equal to 4 plus r squared. So that's 16, 32, 8, 16, r plus 2r squared is equal to 16 plus 8r plus r squared. So then we we'll subtract to one side to get 16 minus 24r plus r squared is equal to 0. And you could use the quadratic formula or any way you like, but I like to use completing the square. So it's r minus 12 squared, which gives us these two values. So that's 144. To get to 16, we got a minus 128. So zero. So r would be square root of 128 plus a 12. So this one is either plus or minus, and it's definitely going to be a minus because this is positive, and if it's a plus, it's too big. So we're going to have to have, and this is just 64 times 2, so that's 8 square root 2 plus a 12. Or you could say it's 12 minus 8 square root 2. So our k is 12, our w is 8, and our, w, and our f is 2, so add them together, and that gets us 22 as our answer for number 9. Ah. Okay, just trying to complete the box. Okay, cool. And next question, question 10. So in the diagram, AD is perpendicular with CD, so we just have that. And they say that AB is perpendicular with AC. So this is perpendicular, this is perpendicular. And we have 5, 12. So that's the 5, 12, 13 triangle. So this is 13. So then this is 84. And then find the area of the quadrilateral. So this entire thing. So it's just 5 times 12 over 2 plus 13 times 84 over 2. So you could just do this in your calculator. So that is 60 plus 30 times 84 divided by 2. And that should give us 576 as your answer. Okay. Number 11. In the diagram, not necessarily drawn to scale, A, B, D, A, D, B, and C lie on the circle. A, B is a diameter, and A is smaller than this. And this line is perpendicular with this line. Okay. So let's actually kind of draw this out. So we know, so the radius of a circle is length 19.5. So that means the diameter, since this is the diameter, is 39. So we call this, uh, let's say, A. Then this is 39 minus A. So uh, the thing about inscribed angles and lines is that since this is perpendicular, that tells us that these two lengths are the same. So we have, we could call it Y, so Y. And another property is that the product of the things that are split are equal to each other. So x, so y times y equals y squared, and a times uh, 39 minus a is the same. So basically, y equals the square root of that. So we can plug that in. Square root of a, 39 minus a. Okay, and they said that the ratio of CD to a, CD to AB. So from this entire length, so that's 2 square root a 39 minus a over the entire diameter, which is 39, is equal to 12 to 13. So we could solve for a, so cancel out the, so we could scale this up to 36 over 39, cancel out the 39s, so divide by 2 to get 18. So then we could square both sides, so a, and then distribute this out, so that's negative a squared plus 39 a is equal to uh, 18 squared, which is 324. So we could move it all to one side. So that's 8 squared minus 39a plus 324 is equal to 0. So a minus a minus, right? Because this is plus and this is minus. So remember, 324 is 18 squared. 18 plus 18 is 36, which is really close to 39. So it might just be a little higher. And 18 is just 3 times 3 times 2. So maybe it's now 3 times 3 times 3. So that's 27. And 324 divided by 27 is 12. Okay, so that actually makes 39. 
So A is either 27 or 12. So which one is it? Well, remember, A is this side, and A has to be the smaller section. So A is 12. Okay? So A equals 12. So now we have to find the ratio of AE to um, CE. So AE is uh, 12, and CE is the square root of 12 times 39 minus 12, uh, which is 27. So this is just uh, 9 times 3, so it's 3 and 3 inside. Take away the 3s here to make a 3, and that's a 4. Take away the 4 to make a 2. So it's 12 divided by this. So 3 and 2, that's a 6. Cancel out. That means the ratio is 2 to 3. So that's your K and that's your W. And then you can plug it in, which is 2 times 2 is 4, plus the 3 is a 7. And that's your answer for number 11. OK, number 12. In the diagram, A, B, C, D is a rhombus. If the degree measure of uh, A, D, C is 7 times the degree measure of B, A, C, find the measure of B, C, D. OK, so let's draw the diagram. So if we label this as x, that means this is 7x. So uh, since this is a rhombus, that means this is x, this is x, this is x, and this is 7x, because it has to be the same. That's the idea of a rhombus. So BAC is these two, so 2x, so when you find 2x. So always write an objective, because the, or else you'll forget. 7 plus 1 plus 1 is 9, plus, times 2, because there's two of them, is 18x, is equal to 360. So x equals 20. Plug into your 2x, and that gives you a 40. And that's basically it. OK, uh, number 13. Two cubes have edges with their respective side lengths 4 and 5. So the ratio of the smaller to the larger is k to w. So if the side length is 4 to 5, the volume is just cube of that, because a volume is just a side length cube. So just cube, cube. So that's 64 to 125. Add them together, 189. And that's your answer. That's it. Okay, so a really basic question. Okay, number 14. Um, if you don't, just to say in the beginning, usually you have questions like these that might seem really long, and you might just want to skip them because they're actually like way too long to um, solve. And sometimes it might really be difficult. So let's say we have a line here, line here, and a line here. Okay, so we have a triangle, A, B, a, B, C, and A, C. So A, oops, A, B, C. And in types like these, you actually want to draw a picture, or you're going to get confused. And then uh, they say that we have a line, basically, in the sentence, D lies on B, C, where um, A, D intersects B, C. So. We have a D here, so A so A D intersects B C and D lies on here. So put that. I'll put some points here so then we can actually start working on stuff later on. Okay, E F is a common external tangent of inscribed circles of these two triangles. So um, it's two of the smaller triangles and there's a common external tangent. So common external tangents you have to write circles. So And right there. And we have another one. And let's move it a bit down. Move it up a bit. Okay. That's good. So, um, and there's a common external tangent. So external means it goes somewhere like here. And that is line EF. So it doesn't matter where E and F is. Let's call this EF like that. So um, let's label some points of tangency. So right here, right here, right here, right here, here, here. And these might look like it's the same point, but not. So it's like right here. And like right here. Okay. So, so this point of tangency is for this circle, and this point of tangency for this circle. Okay. So, 
just to differentiate. And let G be the intersection of A, 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 D, and E, F. So this is point G. Okay. And H and J be points of tangency of A, B, D for A, B, and C, D. So H and J. And um, I and K be points of tangency for A, C, D for AC and CD. So this is I and this is K. And let L and M be the points of tangency uh, with AD, so this point, this line, um, for ABD. So ABD is this point, so this is L, and this one is our M. OK, so find AG. So we need to find this length. Okay, so let's just label this thing as, um, I don't know, x. And let's label all, and now we're going to label all these bottom points as a, so this is x, and we'll call this a, b, c, and d. So how we're going to solve this is that we're basically going to use like um, common external tangents. So like right here, right here. These, since the line made by these two are the same, then basically they're the same. So that's just the idea of common uh, like tangents. So like that. So that's D, and this is also D. And now we're gonna work with this point, and we're gonna go from this point into this one. It's not gonna go to this one because this one's for this circle. We not, we want to focus on this one, right? Because common external tangent doesn't work for doesn't work for different circles. It has to work for the same circle. So these are the for the circle. So if this is B, that means this tells us this entire thing is B. And using this one, this here, and this one here, that is C. So since this entire thing is B, right, that tells us that that section right here is C, and this small section is B minus C. Okay. And now we know, um, let's label some other values. So we know AB is 2013, ABC is 2014, and AC is 2015. So what we could do now is that we know from B to H, that's D, So and AB is 2013, so you could just subtract those two. So 2013 minus D, and plus D is 2013, right? So it's the same thing here, so 2015 minus your A. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to use a point of tangency right here. So we're going to have to go straight down to get to this point. So we need to find another one. So go straight down to get to this one, because that's for this circle, right? So that tells us that um, what we need to do is that we have x here, and we have this length, but we need to find this length, which is a mystery. So first, we need to get this length, and then we could find this one. So that's our objective. So, oops, 2015 minus A. So this value, which um, I'm going to prove, is going to be equal to your value of uh, B, I think. Wait, no. Uh, actually, I don't know. So what we're going to have, ju I'm just going to prove it at this moment. So basically, let's call this um, Y. So if this point is Y, right, remember this one's right here, so that's Y. So this point is also y. But remember, this is going to be um, b minus c, right? I mean b plus c, because that's a common external tangent. And this is also a common external tangent, so that's b plus c. So if we label this as y, then basically this value is also y. But this value is b plus c altogether. So this is b plus c minus your y. OK. So that tells us since we could use another common external tangent from this point to go down here, and then from here to go down here, that means y plus b minus c plus b minus c is equal to b plus c minus y. So we could cancel out our b's because they're both positive, and then move the c here to get 2c, move the y here to get 2y. So that means our y is equal to our c. Okay. So that tells us that this is C, this is C, and if Y is equal to C, that's just B right here. So C, C, B. 
So C, C, B. Cool. And now we have everything. Going back to this point of tangency, which is what we wanted for our goal. Now we have 2015 minus A is equal to X plus your C. And we could do the same thing for this one right down here. So we have 2013 minus D is equal to X plus uh, C plus B minus C. So those C's cancel out, just add a B. Okay. So basically what we would do is that um, we could move the C to the side and the B to the side and then add them together. So we have 2015 plus 2013, which is 4,028. Uh, minus an A plus a B plus a C plus a D, and then equal to 2X. So what's A plus B plus C plus D? That's 2014. It's just this line. So we could have uh, 40, 28 minus 2014, and then divide by 2 to get our X. And that's basically how we solve it. So 40, 28 minus 2014 divided by 2. And we get 1,007. And that is your answer for number 14. Okay, so it's a pretty interesting question, but it's also really long. And it's also not intuitive, so I recommend you skipping it. Okay, number 15. In the diagram, A, A, B, C is equilateral. So if it's equilateral looking at the diagram, that means the side length has to be the same. So x plus 3y plus 8. So that will be x is equal to 2y plus 7. And we could plug it back into one of these side lengths to get uh, 4x, 5x, I mean 5y. And that's 14 plus 1 is 15. So if this is the side length in terms of just one variable for a uh, equilateral, and they say that the perimeter is more than 107, so multiply by 3 to get the perimeter is greater than 107. So using your calculator, 107 divided by 3 minus 15 divided by 5 is 4.13 repeating. So basically, since x and y has to be integers and you're looking for the smallest possible, if you're looking for the smallest possible for um, the value, that means you want the smallest possible y. So y, smallest as an integer, is 5. Okay. So now we could plug this back in because this is a side length. So 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times uh, 15 is 25 plus 15 is 40. So that's your side length. And to get the area of a equilateral triangle, it's the side length squared times square root 3 over 4. So that's just a uh, area of an equilateral triangle. So plug it in. That's 40 squared. 40 divided by 4 is 10. 10 times the 40 is 400 square root 3. And that's your answer for number 15. Number 16. Okay, we have a diagram. It's a trapezoid. And they say that B is the midpoint of AC. So it's the midpoint. And, um, and they say H is the midpoint of CF. So we have CF in the midpoint. And then basically we just connect a line from there. And this value is halfway of this value. So that basically tells us that this point and this point, they're all like mid midpoints, basically. So now AF is 20 and CD is 32. And we have to find B. So since this triangle is halfway of this triangle because of these side lengths, right? That tells us that half of 20 is 10 right here. And it's the same thing here. Since this is uh, this triangle and this triangle, since this is halfway of this, so half of 32 is 16. So this entire thing is 16. So to get this length, let's just add the 2. So that's 26. And that is your answer for number 16. Just that simple. Number 17. OK, we have a diagram. So we have AB is equal to BC and ED is equal to DC. So this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. And they say FB, we, it's this one, call it X, and EF is X plus 3. Okay. And AF is uh, FD, so FD will call Y. 
and this will be 3y minus 5. So how much longer is AF to FB? So our objective is to find uh, our x and our y's and 3y minus 5 minus the x. So the difference between the AF and FB. So how do we solve this? Well, I noticed that these lengths are the same. So that tells us that these two lines are medians. So if that's a median, the special case about medians is that the vertex to the intersection and then from the intersection to the point on the other line, that it's always the ratio of two to one. So that tells us that x plus three divided by x is two to one. And three y minus five divided by y is two to one. So cross multiply x plus three equals two x, three y minus five equals two y. So that gives us that x is equal to three and y is equal to five, obviously. And now we can plug it in. So that's 15 minus five minus three and that's a seven. And that's your answer for number 17. Okay, number 18. Find the sum of the number of degrees in an interior angle of a convex polygon with 25 sides. So the formula is just 180, the number of sides minus two. So plug in 25 in there. So 25 minus two is 23, 23 times 180 is 4,140. And that's it. Number 19, a quadrilateral with side lengths of four, four, five, seven, and k is inscribed in a circle. The area of this quadrilateral is not integral, but it's w squared p. And then if w, if they're integers and w plus p is prime, find all possibilities of k. So basically, um, you're going to use a formula called Brahmaguptas, which is the same thing as Heron's. So add them together. So 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus k is 16 plus k. Then divide by 2. And then from each of those four numbers, subtract it from 16 plus k. So that's going to be 8 plus k over 2 times um, 6 plus k over 2 times a 2 plus k over 2 and times 16, plus k, uh, 16 minus k over 2. And then take the square root and that's your area. So basically what this tells us is that um, if you kind of think about it, we would just take the square root of the top. right, of all these, and we're multiplying them all together. And then two, time, two times two times two times two is, and then you take the square root of that, you just cancel out these two, so we get a four on the bottom. So we need a four on top, so we need a 16 actually in the square root. So what we have to do is that since I notice these are all even, and if k is odd, then it's odd times odd times odd times odd, which is not possible because four is even, okay? So we can't divide that, so k has to be even. And from k here, it can only go from 1 to 16. Because six, if it goes anything higher, it becomes negative. So it's going to be even, and it's going to be 1 to 16. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. Okay. And the reason is because you can't put 16 because that's going to make 0. So now we can list all the possibilities. So the first one is 8 plus k. So k is 2. So then that's 10. And then you could just go straight down, which is 12, 14, 16. 18, 20, and 22. And then next one, 6, that's 8, and it goes straight down. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And then 2, that's 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And then 16, and that's 14, and it goes, um, and it actually kind of like decreases, so it's actually going to become a 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. So each of these possibilities is a different k so this k equals 2 k equals 4 k is 6 right etc and we have to find which one works so remember they first has to come out they first had to be um have a 16 so we need to cancel out our 16s so a 8 here and a 2 here makes a 7 and that gives us 8 and 2 that makes 16. so let's get rid of our 16s in each of them so 4 here and 4 here a um, 8 here and a 2 here, that leaves a 7. A 16 already, 16 already. Um, a 4 here and a 4 here, that leaves a 5. And a 16 here. Okay, so now each of them, now these are going to be in the form k square root p, I mean w square root p. So we need to make sure that w plus p is prime. So if you look at this, 
uh, we have a 10 and a 4. So this is going to 10, 4, and a 7. So this is going to be 2 square root 70 because, uh, because if you actually do the math, it's just square of 4 and I mean square root of 4, which is 2, and then s these cannot be factored out. So it's 2 square 70, and 2 plus 70 is even, so this is not possible. We have a 3 and a 3 here, so that's 3. Uh, take the 2s from here. That's a 3 and a 5, so that is 15. So that's 6 squared 15. 6 plus 15 is 21, so that doesn't work. Okay, and uh, we have a 12 here, so that makes a 4. I mean, a 4 inside, and then take the square root is 2 outside. So there's a 3. And then uh, you can't factor anything out, so that's... Um, so then we have a 7, a 3, and a 10. So that gives us 210. Okay, so that is also not possible because that's going to be even. So even plus even equals even, so it's not going to be prime. And now this one, we have 14, a 10, and an 8. So that is a 4, makes a 2 outside and a 2 inside. And 2 inside, okay. Take the 2 here and the 2 here, that leaves a 5 to make up the 2. And you can't factor this out, so that's going to be a 70, so this is not going to be possible because they're both even. And we take the 9 here to make a 3 with the 2 outside, inside. A 4, that makes a 2, so that's a 3. These two are 6s, so makes this. So it's, there's no radical, so this is not possible. Because they say it's non-integer. And now we have this one, which is a, a 3 and outside and the 2. 2 and 2 here, that's a 7 inside. 7 times uh, 5 is 35. So that's 6 square root uh, 35. 6 plus 35 is 41. And 41 is prime, so this works. And now we have 12, um, I mean 22. The 2 here and the 2 here makes an uh, 2. That's an 11. And this is a 20. Take uh, the 4 here to make a 2, and that's a 5. So that's going to be square root 55. So 4 squared 55, 4 plus 55 is 59. So that's prime, so this works. works. So only 12 and 14 works, and that's a total of 26. And that's your answer for number 19. So it's one of the trial and error ones, but it's, it kind of takes a bunch of work. Number 20, the final one. Okay, so let's draw a picture. Okay, so they say that AF is 4. They say that EF is 6, and they say that AB is 5, and DE is 3 squared 2. And we have to find AD, so we have to find this entire length. So let's call this X and let's call this Y. Let's focus on this one first. So in scribe angle lines tells us that it's 6 plus 4, which is 10, times the 4, that part outside, equals X plus 5, plus the times the part outside is 5. Cancel out the 5, that's a 2, that's an 8, it equals x plus 5, x equals 3. Okay, so we know this is equal to 3. Okay, so that's done. And now we can focus on this part. So we have the x equals 3, so 3 plus y times the part outside, which is y, is equal to this number squared. So it's 3 square root 2 squared, which is 9, 18. So that's y squared plus 3y minus 18 equals 0. So y plus 6 and y minus 3 equals 0. So that means y equals 3. So that's equal 3. So now the entire length is just 5 plus 3 plus 3, which is 11. And that is your answer for 20. And that completes everything. So as an overview, basically, uh, it's actually one of the more challenging ones. It's probably the most challenging because there's a bunch of questions that actually take a bunch of time like number 19, number 14, and number 8. And then there's some questions like 9 and 11 that actually take several like time to solve. So overall, you got to know your formulas or you're going to struggle really bad on this. So basically, just know to take away from this. Um, know your similarity, know your similarities between triangles and know a bunch of formulas with inscribed angles and lines. And questions like 14 you should probably skip because it's way too long and difficult well thanks for watching and i'll see you at the next math record